this is a paper that relates to work I've been doing at Street House. I come from a commercial archaeology background, uh, uh, but I've been doing research at Street House for the last 15 years. And this year I realised I've spent the last year, well, I've spent a year of my life in the same field, which, considering I've been married for 30 years, is something of a miracle, isn't it? But in terms of descriptions, in terms of what I'm, do what I'm doing, I'm not looking at recycled objects, which I've defined up there. I'm looking at how objects have been acquired and re reused, and I'll be showing some Bobby Dazzler ex examples from my excavations at Street House, which um, I came to excavate in 2004, <coughs> Uh, when I was doing research on my PhD, that's the proof of that indicator of esteem, on an iron age settlement, defined by a ditch going around here, and we did the geophysics, all great, iron age enclosure, there might be a roundhouse in the middle. It didn't tell me there was 109 sodding Anglo-Saxon graves, which, when you're doing your thesis on settlement 300 BC, and you find some at 600 AD, you're a thousand years out in your data collection. <laughs> <laughs> but trust me, I got a PhD on the Iron Age and the book on the Anglo Saxon cemeteries published. Now, from the Anglo Saxon cemeteries, I'm a serial recidivist. I've managed to excavate five over my 30 year, 40 years experience. I say fossil. And my work at Street House is focused. I went to Street House because I knew there was a Neolithic site there, point num number one up there. But it's an inhabitant. It's a settlement that's been inhabited for thousands of years. I'm now digging the earliest Neolithic house in Yorkshire, uh, round about where number, number 14 is, as part of my ongoing research there. But I didn't expect to find the Anglo-Saxon Anglo settlement, uh, the Anglo-Saxon cemetery, sorry. The thing about street house is there's a whole range of stuff. And we under we've understood for many years how Anglo-Saxon cemeteries are often placed within Bronze Age burials and you're re reusing earlier sites. But the theme I'm talking about today really is how you're not just acquiring sites, you're acquiring the objects from the sites and placing, placing them with, within, within the, the cemetery and the burials in this case. So what you're looking at is a unique cemetery, this square plan defined, defined by the graves, that's a conversion period cemetery. These cemeteries are where, site, it's a curious thing, the, cha the changing, potentially changing religious practices, lots of other things in the, in the 7th century AD and acquiring earlier sites to place new, new burial mon monuments in, in, inside them here. And at Street House, you haven't just got gr graves placed in, in there. It's a period where there are not a lot of objects inside the graves, so the things that are in the graves have much more resonance and significance. And what we found at Street House was that you've got a lot of reused objects. I'll really be talking about the reused objects in, inside, the, inside the graves, but broadly within the sites, this morning we discussed the Iron Age, and what I'm trying to do is recap everyone's Iron Age. I've got a miniature quernstone like, like this, as a little curated item pl placed as, as something inside the ring of an Iron Age roundhouse. Lots of other examples of this reuse and reacquisition of things, but we focus is supposed to be on the sexy Saturn at Street House alliterative as well. There are nine graves here where I say you've clearly got re reuse. I'll be showing you the pictures so the numbers are some, somewhat, um, somewhat mis useless. But what we can say is that here you've got a high proportion of reuse. So for example, I dug at Norton and there's 120 burials. Only one of them was reusing a Roman object. Usual sort of common thing. Roger White looked at this in, in the 80s the and these are often Roman coins, often 4th century in date, so they're then acquired, they're still in the currency, such as if I go home, I can probably find a penny or a farthing of 150 years old. They're the same sort of currency, they're still around in, in your lifetime. You might think of them as an heir heirloom almost. And so some se Saxon cemeteries are reusing Roman objects of 4th century date in 6th century cemeteries. Here, the date is different. We're in the 7th century, so you get a, a broader time, time span, and I'll be coming on to the to the theme of that. Roger White was also saying how these are often found closer to, to Roman sites. So you've got more of an incidence of uh, where you've got Roman objects found and have potentially been found or redug re from, from Roman sites. So to say, often coins commonly found in bags or worn. Street house for the Iron Age amongst us, focus. We've got 
Eight inch coins, Coril Tabai, uh, Alan would say something like 15, between 15 and 45 AD. Colin Hayes Grove, me to the rest of it is slightly, diff slightly different date, but the certainly first century coins in a seventh century context. Bobby Dazzler, still, still gold, gold quality, almost, almost mint, slightly bored, you'd probably, probably expect that. Now this is where I'm saying these items have been curated and collected and reused and they've got a symbolism and a significance. Uh, I'll come back to that, but that's the position of how they were found associated with a number of beads in a grave, and I've postulated what, what they look like there. Colin helpfully said, which way up with the pacing? I said, how do I know they're black on both sides? But actually, we can see they were bored and dished, so I did, we did manage to work that out, and I'll come back to it. Grave 42, the, the sort of admiral of the fleet, if you like, this shield-shaped scallop, scallop pendant here is a reused piece because it's got this motif which is unusual absolutely unknown and unparalleled as is the brooch but this scallop shape is unused un unknown in anglos in anglo-saxon burials but as we know it's a common motif on graves graves so grave markers and things in in roman times and this is one of the pieces that i postulate has been acquired and reused for its symbolism and placed in this pendant which again as i say is unique and has all of these 57 scallop shaped shells around them alongside a fragment of a jet jet pinhead which was worn, worn by the princess on the bed of which, of which more later um, you're getting the the idea that we've also got iron age material reused of an iron age type b cultist type b b with, with the, the best assemblies, because it was about the only grave I dug, but we, we found all of those th things together. Uh, this is in the triangular pendant of, again, 7th century date. And whilst most of the things I'm saying are happening at you, 3,000 years unique, there are other examples of this, fingers crossed. Yes, uh, because we got, <laughs> I went through and looked at some of the other iron, iron reuse of Iron Age beads. They're often in 7th, 7th century context. Uh, at Sheffield Hill, it's in a, in a pendant. Um, uh, that's 7th century, you've got Street House one, and the, there's another example as, as well, Sheffield's Hill. Um, but they're in silver pendants, so obviously not as important as the, the gold ones from, from Street House. But what I'm what saying is, Iron Age beads have been found, acquired, reused, and put, put into another form of currency at that time. And as I say at the bottom here, in the 7th century, there's a conscious decision made to acquire antique objects and place them with the body on the grave. So the ch changing the use of them, you're not if necessarily being worn, they may have just been found in bags or in boxes by the 7th century, because people are, are dressing differently. But the important thing is they're choosing to select these objects, and I'll come back to why, the, why they're doing that at the end. Um, again, what pieces of bottle glass, Roman things that have been found, and I would go on to su suggest that we've got a Roman settlement nearby, and they're consciously going out and acquiring, digging up these objects and trying to choose and, se choose and select, select them for placement in the graves. The jet pendant, the only parallel I've found to this, there's very few pieces of jet in Saxon times, even though jet jewellery is made at street house in Roman and earlier times is this Bronze Age slider from uh, Burial at Scorton on, on, on the Hambledon Hills and North Yorkshire Moors. So again, you're finding things that are unparalleled in the Saxon times, I'm saying they're from an earlier time. Uh, we've got Iron Age fragmentation of bangles and things. We've discussed that elsewhere, where the bangle is broken up and Granny's bangle is shared out amongst every one of her granddaughters that turn into pendants and things like that until you get this fragmentation. But again, that's not it never been suspended to anything. It's not drilled through it, so it's not no longer worn. It's, this was found again in a bag. So they're changing the acquiring them, getting the use for them, not necessarily boiling them down to make to make beads as others, such as <coughs> others have suggested, but that they're being part of a dress set. Going on to the other things where we're talking about how pieces are being adapted and reused, this seventh century um, this has been cultivated, curated. Uh, the change, the change, the uh, the change of suspension loop on the top. We know that because we look on the back. You can see how the bats are heated up. It's bubbled. The connection loops are a different uh, 
connector over, over the top they've been curating these items thinking that it's significant and then adapting them and reusing them and heating it up it's bubbled on the back and you can see it's got repairs on the front so that's filling in with the themes we've had about repairs and other things later on I'm looking for me five minutes time because I know I'm going 90 mile an hour um, <laughs> what, what I'm saying is happening at Street House is that it's a significant site in, in, the, in the whole northern Britain for, this, for that. This is where there's a seventh century Anglo Saxon bed burial, like, like the one here. The others are found in East Anglia and in the southwest. And they're the other examples that I was showing you where, where the, the beads are coming from that are re reusing these things. And so I'm saying it's a status thing. It's the people who have the high quality objects that are the most wealthy that are acquiring these objects making a dress sense of showing them trust me you can't wear a, walk around Loftus today wearing bling like that and jewellery because you get bloody mugged and it would have been the same in the 7th century so that my, what I suggest is it's somebody of a certain class status and kudos that you can't you look at me but don't touch me you know so that it's somebody of high status at street house and in many of these other in instances that are acquiring these things for display to say a statement now, other examples, although Street House is the most important site in the world, you've got to trust me on that one now, <laughs> but there are other places where, where the, this is happening, and conversion period cemeteries, where you've got this reuse of earlier items, be it Romano British coins, but uh, gla Iron Age glass, glass bead at Cow, Cow Low, Ixworth, where you've got Roman coins, Bronze Age burials with jet beads, things that are similar to what's happening at Street House, albeit in isolated instances. But as you know, many of these things were extra was activated in the 19th century, as was Cowlo and so on and so on. We discussed earlier how these things were collected and thought, well, it can't be associated with it because that's bronze age, that's iron age. You must have different things and they were somewhat dispersed and, and not considered. These are just the things I, I pulled together sort of for, for, for this paper. Again, Swanacliff Down, bed burial with, with iron, iron age bead re reused in it. And this does seem to be an element of status within, within the bed burial, some of which uh, are quite lowly in terms of status. This is me being a functionalist and saying, if you've got lots of bling, you've got more, we more wealth than, than perhaps um, people who are just buried with, with a pot beside, beside them. You might have, I know we can take the theory for, to that for several weeks, but what, I, what I'm saying is that the, all of these conversion period cemeteries are reusing these objects at a time when the overall trend in emphasis is that you, if you're pure conversion, you're getting over to Christianity, you don't need to take these things with you because you've got this faith, faith and, and belief that you don't need these things for the afterlife. And we find as archaeologists that proportions go from 80 to 79% of objects in grave in the 6th century down to 40% or less. So I argue what you're putting in your graves at that time has more significance and it has more meaning because you're making a conscious decision to do it. You no longer wear these things as, as dress items. They're being found as placed objects in the graves. So you think about the ceremony, the, the mem memories of how things are placed in the people. They're not necessarily things that people have worn, but the things that are remembrances of the, of the mourners who are put, laying posies. We never find them, but, but they're laying fragments of broken pottery from the good party they had at Tag the night before, the, throwing in the broken vessels, etc., etc. Symbolism at the mean. I've argued in the paper in Medieval Archaeology that was out last year on, on this. So this is all old hash anyway now. This is, I think this is a Christian motif. The coin has been perforated for suspension. And if you can't see a cross in, in there, here's the glasses. The scallop shaped, shaped shell, Steve Shorrock <coughs> says, that's the observation, is a Christian motif that you find uh, on many of these high status burials. Um, the pectoral cross that was recently found at Trumpington in, Cam in Cambridge and others have strong Christian motifs and the females that are wear wearing these, so we've I've gone into sex as well, but we've got that bit on time, about the gender of the people that are doing this are often, fe are often females, there's a whole theme on that rather than just, rather than just a conference. I'm running down now because this is, I'm giving you the emphasis on what's happening within the six, sexy six, se Saxon cemetery, but it's happening across across the site. We've got the mace head in, inside the Iron Age, inside the Iron Age roundhouse. The Neolithic rock art moved 15 metres from the house in, into the Roman building. That in the Iron Age enclosure ditch, and I should have showed the Iron Age mini crone. The Iron Age mini crone. Oh, I'll take I'll take two. Uh, I'm nearly there. It's been a 
a race, but um, trust me on this. Uh, so what, what we're saying is we're not just an interest in earlier sites or finds in the Anglo-Saxon period, but a tradition established where, where great, great finds are rarer. I've said that. There's a conscious decision that these finds must come from somewhere, and people have argued that you want to physically reorder their history and memories. So we're going back to memories and ideas and what these things mean. You don't recycle them because you want to keep the message that's in it and acquire it for your own status. Be it a, a race or something that may reflect kingship or something reflecting your faith or showing how important or how rich, rich you are. And as I say, this is not occurring at all sites. It's seen to be a conversion period, cemeteries at high status and female. The items are no longer heirlooms, because I don't, even I, at my age, don't have any 700 year old relatives back from, from the Iron Age and things. So they're actually finding them, cu curating them, uh, collecting, collecting them in, in some way. Uh, it's, whilst it's occurring across the country in the limited study, study I, I did between road schemes, it's explicit at Street House because I went through all, all, all of the, da the data. And this is sort of the conclusion of what, what I've come to. Uh, it's been a run through. I apologise apologize for that. I've distilled 7,000 words into about 17 minutes, I think. But that's what the site ended up like. And if you have any questions, let's go for it. Thank you. <laughs>